trees are fantastic. They provide wood, shade, and oxygen, among other things. Trees just stoically do their thing, season after season, year after year, and are often taken for granted. There are those who fully understand the value of trees to life on Earth, and they promote tree awareness, education, and improve urban neighborhoods by sponsoring tree planting events to mitigate climate change. Today, we're going to learn all about the many details involved in a successful tree planting event. We'll find out why this school was selected and how the trees will improve the environment on campus. We will learn how to correctly plant a tree and the species of trees planted here today. We'll hear from volunteers and leaders who arrived early They'll share with us the benefits they receive from promoting trees and being involved in this community event. The wind makes the tree stronger. Delina, a volunteer and parent, gives us a quick introduction to the school and explains how happy she is to have the trees. It's amazing. We're actually very blessed to be able to attend and be a part of this school. Um, the teachers and the staff is all wonderful and um, everyone's very nice. Definitely changed the environment. I think um, environment is very important for children, um, the space that they're in, so this school doesn't have a lot of shade, so definitely provide a lot of shade and um, of course we all need trees and oxygen and um, we use trees for a lot of stuff so the kids are able to learn and be in an env environment that has more nature. I love climbing them. I used to climb them all the time when I was a kid. Uh, we use trees for paper. The kids need to know that trees is a big part of our environment and we need to keep planting them to keep them going. Some of the benefits volunteers will enjoy? Honestly, just being around the community and being around friends and um, meet new people. Planting trees, it's always great. This project started months ago and even in the week leading up to today's planting, it was discovered that irrigation was needed. So quickly, the trenches were dug, the pipes were installed on Tuesday, on Friday, the holes for the trees were dug, and Saturday, everyone showed up for some beneficial fun. We're planting trees. <laughs> Why? Why? So we can make our yard look beautiful for our children, and fun, and lots of shade. It's a learning experience, you know, and they talk about having more oxygen and stuff outside, you know, for them. Kelly White, Director of Program Development and Education for Tree New Mexico, gives us an overview of today's events. This is a tree planting on a little parochial school campus. It's a little church and a school. This school works with uh, people in this community and has served them for over 50 years. And it is a delightful place to be. She explains why the irrigation is necessary. Well, initially we were going to let them hand water these new 40 trees. That's a lot of work, um, you know, tracking the water, moving it from tree to tree, lots of hoses, etc. And Green Summit Landscape Management came in and said, we want to help you get bubblers to all those trees and a timer so that those teachers and administrators don't have to also water trees, which is so wonderful. And so they have come in and over the course of a couple of weeks, they're going to get bubblers on each one of these trees and they will get consistent water. Trees have to have water. The lovely thing about that, people think that because they take a lot of water, it's a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because what trees do is they act like one of our old fashioned swamp coolers. That canopy actually releases humidity or water and causes the temperature to drop by sometimes up to 40 degrees. It's pretty amazing. So that's why when you walk under a tree and you're coming from hardscape, asphalt or cement, and you walk under that tree, you actually get this incredible blast of cool air and it feels so significantly different. Well, that's what these trees are gonna do for this campus. All of this sand and dirt is going to have canopy over it and these kids are going to be, it's going to lower the temperature significantly for all of this campus. 
Um, it's an elementary school, and for the most part, the school has dirt, sand, and lots of metal buildings. So this tree canopy, we're putting in 40 trees today, the tree canopy is going to rock these kids' world. <laughs> it's just going to be amazingly beautiful, and they will have lots of shade, lots of green space. Um, it's just a really exciting planting. We haven't done one this exciting, I don't think because the, of the need. There's just a huge need for this little school and its community. Notice that Kelly is doing a lot of hard work prior to the arrival of the volunteers, and she explains the timing of this large project. Volunteers come at 8.30. It's a somewhat regimented order in which everything happens. Um, lots of different steps. There's almost 200 steps to putting a planting event on. Um, everything from determining who the client is or the people that need the trees um, all the way to actually getting the trees in the ground watered and ready to rock and roll. Um, the trees that we are planting on this site today are trees that are on the climate um, climate ready tree list that the Nature Conservancy put out. Uh, we are becoming increasingly warmer and warmer in the city of Albuquerque. So these trees are trees that can take the heat, uh, can take periods of drought or um, lack of water. They are trees that are street trees normally or trees that have a significant canopy on them. We only have one, two, three, four, six shrubs that we're planting. Um, the rest are all trees. Um, we're planting one called a sensation maple, which is actually a box elder. It's a new tree that we're planting around the city. It's an incredible tree and um, it's hardy like the box elder, um, but it has the color of a maple. So it turns those beautiful, brilliant red, orange and yellows in the fall. We're also planting what are called Ali elms. Um, they are a cousin to the Siberian elm, but they don't do what the Siberian elm, which is what we've had so much trouble in the city with, they don't do what that tree does. They actually um, seed in the fall, so they don't prolificate all over the place, and you don't have little babies coming up all over the place. But like the Siberian, which has been so much trouble, they're very, very hardy. Anything in the Ulmus family, anything that is an elm, is extremely hardy, and they do really well in our climate. So we have a bunch of those. We have two ash trees that are going in to complete a hedgerow. They had three ash trees on the property that were still um, going strong and we're going to complete that hedge with two more and make it nice and full around the preschool canopy um, I mean the preschool yard and then we have a burr oak that's going in oaks are indigenous to our area um, they also are very very hardy they're slow growing um, so we kind of write them off because they don't become a great big huge canopied tree right away. But they last forever and they're beautiful, beautiful trees. And they also have beautiful fall color. So in addition, we have a small um, orchard that's going in for educational purposes. These, um, this, the teachers here at this little school, um, which is called the Western Heights Learning Center. Uh, the teachers here actually love teaching their kids about trees and about food. And so we're putting in two apples, two peaches, and two plum trees uh, in a little orchard area that they get to use for curriculum and educational purposes, as well as eating the fruit. After some preparation this morning, Kelly assembles the group for the final instructions and encouragement. You have all been That's assigned fine. a team. The only two teams that are not inside the main yard here, team number one is in front of the school, and team number two is in the preschool yard. So you have to go through the building to get to your team. The rest of the teams are all here in the main yard. You should be fairly evenly distributed. There should be at least four to five volunteers on each of the teams. I want to specifically thank 
Missy for asking us to do this planting. It's very exciting. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful, a wonderful program here, and we're very thrilled to be part of it. I also want to thank my team leaders <laughs> who are going to be teaching you a class in how to correctly plant a tree. Now, I'm sure most of you think I know how to plant a tree. I thought I did too. And we've learned a lot about planting trees that actually helps them survive for 100 years or more. So you want to listen to your instructor. Um, these are people like Joran Veers, who was our city forester, Sarah Herto. Who, was, um, who works for the Nature Conservancy. I mean, these are not just run-of-the-mill people. We have really amazing teachers here to work with you today. So um, enjoy your class. Find your area as quickly as you can. A couple of safety things. Watch for rusty tin cans. As they were digging for the irrigation, they dug up some stuff from about 50 years ago. I think I got it all cleaned up, but there might be some that I missed. Please be careful of the irrigation trenches. Watch where you're walking, because there's trenches and holes everywhere. They will come in and put the bubblers for each one of those trees to water it after we finish planting them. And those of you who have smaller participants volunteering this morning, please make sure that there's an adult in charge of each one of those and watching them and keeping an eye on them. There are sharp tools in the buckets and shovels and rakes and hose can be mighty dangerous if you're not watching what you're doing and being careful. Watch for hands when you're shoveling. Watch for little hands and stuff like that. Just make sure that everybody stays safe. And if you are concerned about your health, wear your mask, okay? So just have an awesome time. Missy, do you want to say something? Yes, of course. <laughs> She's very glad you're here. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you that came out to help us to show a little love to our little school. Thank you to all the kiddos that came back that used to come to our school and our current parents. I wanted to thank Louise for thinking about us. He used to come to our school. Thank you. And for Kelly and Tamar and everybody that helped with this project. It means so, so much to us to have all of you here and to be able to bring trees. And I told all the kids, when your kids come, you're going to say, I planted that tree. So thank you guys. Um, don't forget, we have. We would like to find out why you guys wanted to come help today, and they're going to use this to, to help with other projects. And so don't forget to sign up before you leave. And uh, we have food provided for everybody today, so don't leave before you get your meal from Chick-fil-A. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Head to your location. Planting these 40 trees today will only take a couple of hours. So while the volunteers are busy, we'll hear from some of the highly qualified experts Kelly just mentioned, beginning with Shannon Horst, who yeah, explains some quick. of the many steps yeah. involved in this community event. We have about eight, eight donor organizations and contributors to this project. Executive Director of Tree New Mexico tells us about today's planting and the sponsors who made it possible. Arbor Day, Verizon, Tree Green New Mexico, Southwest Landscaping or Southwest Trees, um, Tree New Mexico. This is not a one-time event. Tree New Mexico is involved in promoting and planting trees year-round. Tree planting is a year-round effort for Tree New Mexico. Uh, we plant, we've been in business for 30 years, 30 plus, and we've planted trees all over New Mexico. We have a very large program in Albuquerque right now called Albuquerque Neighborwoods. Um, in the greater Albuquerque area, we've planted about 4,000 trees in the last three and a half years. How did Southwest Learning Center qualify for this improvement project? This is what we call kind of one of our specialty campus plantings, and um, Arbor Day Foundation and corporate donors um, look for smaller projects, let's say 25 to 30, 40 trees, and um, sites that they feel they would be willing to contribute to. And so they approached us. Um, we, you put in a proposal and um, identify the site, and there are corporate donors that then look at them through a window that Arbor Day provides and decide, yes, we'd like to contribute to that program. And so this is one of those. The Southwest Learning Center, um, I'm sorry, the Western Heights Learning Center was one of those campus planting proposals that we put forward to Arbor Day. 
and Verizon is the donor that picked it up through them. The importance of corporate sponsors and donors is revealed in the estimated cost for this tree planting event. Um, this is 15000 to 20000 by the time you get the trees in our time and there's um, curriculum and educational material that gets, that, uh, gets worked on by the school. Um, the mulch, the digging of the holes there. In this project, we also needed to have some irrigation done, some irrigation lines run, because this school has never had this many trees. They have water and they have spigots, but we wanted to be sure that the trees were gonna get watered on a consistent basis so they survive. So we also had somebody put in some irrigation, some very simple irrigation here. So what does the expected payoff look like? What's the benefit? Shade. That brings the heat down, it improves the health of the kids, um, gives them places where they can get out of the sun when they're out here on the playground. It'll cool the buildings down as well. Um, that'll bring the cost of running those buildings down for the school. Um, it mitigates climate change. Um, and people just, it also improves the value of any property when you have landscaping and, and especially trees. It improves the value of the property. Now, they're not looking to sell the property, but that's okay because it just improves the, you know, the school. This little school has been here for many years serving a, a really underserved population in Albuquerque. Um, so it just is a way to contribute to the work that they're doing with, with thousands of kids that they have educated over the last, I forget, 45, 50 years that they've been in business. There are many worthwhile charities and organizations to get involved with. Shannon explains why she chose trees. I've been involved in some sort of agroecology uh, all my professional life, and I just, um, I just tend towards things that are living things and how to create um, environments around people where they appreciate living things because the more we can understand that, we are essentially as a species all dependent on all the other living things that exist around us. And the more we can understand how to create a habitat, how to live within a habitat that also sustains them, those other living things, the better chance humanity has for surviving. I think our team leaders would tell you that A, we're a lot of fun to work with, we just, um, we're, we're, we're a small organization, we're very efficient, we're very effective, there's almost no bureaucracy working with us. You can just come in, have fun, do your volunteer work, we set things up so that when you show up, you know exactly what we want you to do. You're not just wandering around what you're, wondering what you're supposed to do. Um, and the, the, the blessing of putting a tree in the ground that's going to benefit a community for 50, 60, 70, 100 years, I think that's why people do it. They just love putting trees in the ground and seeing we have a, an 85 to 90 percent survivability rate on our trees that we've planted. So I think people feel like I'm going to put this tree in the ground and these guys are going to make sure it survives. And Shannon really enjoys working with the Arbor Day Foundation. Arbor Day is the oldest tree foundation. Um, almost everybody knows who they are. Um, we are loving having this corporate partnership with them um, and being able to facilitate these specialty plantings like this campus planting, um, working in partnership with Arbor Day. Based on her experience, she explains how the environment should look. If we can get back to doing a mix of a polyculture of trees and bushes and smaller plots of farmland in between. We will build wildlife habit, we will hold more water in the ground, we will restore uh, freshwater riparian areas. Um, I mean there's just so much that we can do whether we're in the Great Plains or we're here in New Mexico or we're in the Northeast. If we understand how to have, help humans live as part of a species in an ecosystem. Jim explains why he loves trees. Uh, I'm the president of the Foundation for Building which is a not-for-profit that uh, supports sustainability projects in the built environment and this is one of our stellar projects that we're we're highly supportive of and have uh, contributed towards this uh, planning this morning. Well, because it's simple, it's easy to do. I mean, trees are going to be around for a long, long time. It's This is a legacy project from our perspective that will outlast all of us and last for generations and it'll benefit several generations of, of students that come to this school in the, in the future. And the built environment needs to be softened, it needs to be 
uh, the, the urban heat sink, which increases the heat in Albuquerque because of the urban density, uh, needs to be mitigated, and the, one of the best ways to do that is through the planting of trees. What joy does he get yeah. from being here today? Well, it's just as simple as what you just said. It really is no more, uh, no more is needed than, than that. Uh, the trees, once again, the trees that are being planted today here will last for generations. So the children who are helping with the planting today will be able to bring their kids and then their grandkids to, to see this, the trees that have been planted uh, this morning. So it's a multi-generational sort of uh, experience and that for us is, is enough. And at the same time, from sort of a scientific point of view, I guess, it's helping mitigate the urban uh, heat sink in Albuquerque, reduce the overall air temperature and, uh, and as a result, it uh, helps the environment as well. So it's both a, a social benefit and also an environmental benefit. Appreciation of trees can last a lifetime. Vicki Turpin recalls oh, nice. Albuquerque Perfect. 60 years ago. It's an environmental thing. The whole world is aware of the fact that we need more grass, we need more trees, we need to cover up the ground. And that's what this is all about. And so I've been working with various institutions for a long time. Um, my daughter Shannon started with holistic management and uh, try, tried to convince people in Africa and Australia and Mexico and all around the world that we have to grow things on the ground. We can't leave it uncovered. And so that's what we're doing. We're covering the ground with trees, and New Mexico certainly needs it. When I moved to New Mexico uh, about 60 years ago, um, there were trees all over, and a lot of those trees have died since then. And we went through a period where people were saying, oh, you don't need that. You put just put rocks down and just put uh, gravel down. That doesn't grow things. That's not what helps the environment and the atmosphere, and that's not what helps people. And so we've got to go back to growing things everywhere we are. She puts it simply as to why we should love trees. It's because we like to breathe. <laughs> Everybody breathes, all the animals breathe. And, and if we get rid of what the, the very process of growing trees, and growing plants, then we then we get away we get away from oxygen. We know that now, and and we've proven it, and and that's what we're doing. We're trying to make the world beautiful, but also provide for ourselves. And of course, we also need food. And um, we need we need to get rid of the poisons. We need to. Uh, fertilize with things that are organic. We need to continue to use our, our common sense and, and not poison things. Um, it's just very, very important. Next, we hear from Chrissy Jeter, Executive Director of Western Heights Learning Center. And she describes the, the project from her perspective, you know, the how it will help the students. Well, actually, one of our former alumni, Luis, uh, gave us a call and he called my sister, helps me run this place. And so she's our program director. She's our people person. <laughs> I'm our paperwork person. So um, she got him out here to plant some trees. We love, we have a garden here already and we love planting and growing and so this was perfect. It aligns with our vision. For the I think just learning to care for their environment. Um, the fruit trees I'm thrilled about because they'll learn how to, um, how fruit grows and they can pick it and they'll we'll make stuff out of it and have uh, fun activities for the kids and I think it's the best part of it is the kids will have um, more opportunities to learn together. We have lots of good events too, lots of community events. So there's going to be a lot of community people enjoying the trees and it's wonderful. We start at two years old and go all the way to fifth grade here. And we also offer home visiting services free to the community. Um, we have New Mexico pre-K and early pre-K. So we do all kinds of things. <laughs> I've been here since about, well, I grew up here, so I've been here 42 years, <laughs> but I've been working here 15. I just love seeing the kids um, 
I love when the light bulb goes on. I love when they uh, learn to love learning. <laughs> um, and also I love to share this kind of stuff that the trees and the plants and the vegetables, we love, um, we love all the growing and the agriculture. And this is an agricultural area. There's tons of farmland down here. So I love to bring that onto campus for them. So it's, it's wonderful to add a lot of trees and vegetation to our campus. I like it. Uh, I want to thank um, Melissa, Missy Padilla, my sister. Give her a hard time all the time, but she's wonderful and she loves this community and she loves the kids and she loves this campus. So she's a big reason why we're even doing this. And I think the best part about today is seeing all the kids that graduated from here. They're all here helping each other and they're all hanging out and they're all um, enjoying being back here today and that's a wonderful feeling. I love being a part of helping families to be healthy all around, so <laughs> that's the best part of my job. While the planting continues, we caught up with John Veers, a longtime supporter of Tree New Mexico. He explains the engineering and architecture and root system of a tree. I have been participating as a volunteer off and on with Tree New Mexico for a number of years. Um, from a shared passion for trees and the planting of trees and the care of trees. And so uh, I especially like plantings like this where it's really going to strongly benefit this school community. And, and you can see the excitement in the, the kids who are here that came through this place that are, you know, getting to help plant it. So, yeah, it's just a little bit of doing good for the world, I guess. I used to be the city forester with the Albuquerque Parks Department. Uh, before that, I was a county horticulture agent here in Bernalillo County. Um, my background educationally is in botany and plant ecology. And so over the years, what I've come to realize about trees is just how extremely important they are in our environment, uh, in, especially in our built environment. And in that setting, what a hard path we often give them. And so I'm all about um, making to the degree possible, making sure that the root system has what it needs. Roots are primary, and so at a planting, that's the one time you get to impact the, the depth that it's planted at, the architecture of the roots, etc. cetera. Uh, so planting, even though it's, it's a relatively simple process, it's, it's important to do it well, and so I, I like to be able to help do it well and to help. Uh, I had five young adults here helping me, and, and they were listening to what I had to say, and I think going forward, uh, they'll be able to take that with them. A majority of tree growth happens in the spring and summer, so is it good to plant in the autumn? Realistically, if you do it well, you can plant year-round. Um, in the autumn, there is some late root growth that happens at a time when leaf demand is reducing. So my thought on that is that it's probably uh, a little bit easier for roots to get that first little bit of root growth into their new environment when they're not also having to supply a lot of water up to the canopy. Uh, then they go dormant, they sit in the ground, and early in the spring before the leaves uh, fully uh, wake up and the leaves expand, the roots start. And, and again, so if that tree can, can kind of come back into uh, active growth, already in its spot and then it just kind of takes off and goes. Um, so I, when I was with the city we would plant most of our trees between December and April. I think that's the best window. It's a pretty broad window. Um, but again with care you can do it any time. Roots by their nature are horizontal phenomenon. Everything roots want is in the shallow soil. Shallow being to a depth of two feet. But when you have a naturally dry soil like we have here and you either have very shallow irrigation or very occasional rainfall and water harvesting, the soil only gets wetted a little bit. And so roots go very, very shallow. I'm a proponent of deep watering, but I define it as put enough water on the surface that it penetrates down to the depth that you want to wet. Then your roots are going to be concentrated down at the one to two foot zone instead of the six inch to one inch zone. But they're still going to be horizontal and shallow. That's what roots want to do. With all of that said, roots grow horizontally, very little vertical growth, uh, occasional for different reasons in a sandy soil because water moves more quickly through that soil and the soil is, is light, roots will go relatively deeper than they will in a heavy soil. 
So in a sandy soil, we might see roots going down to three feet, three and a half feet, where in the same tree in a heavier clay soil, the roots might be in the foot and a half range. But it's still, <laughs> it's still relatively shallow. And so I really want to disabuse the idea of tap roots and deep roots especially in trees planted in an urban environment that were grown in a container, the tap root, tap root is mythological and it's unnecessary. There's nothing that deep this tree needs. To get to the water table, it's got to go hundreds of feet and it won't do that. So tap roots happen if a tree is planted in sight from a seed or very young. There are a few species that do put down more deep roots, Siberian elm, uh, pecan come to mind. But when you look at the bulk of even those trees' root systems, they'll be shallow and horizontal and very broad, well beyond the canopy. He tells us about the trees being planted here today. Well, we're putting in some rather good selections in my mind. Uh, right here next to us, we planted some Chinese pistache. This is a relative of the pistachio nut tree. Um, it's widely used in the southwest in the Albuquerque area. Um, very, very tolerant of our soil chemistry and our hot, dry, uh, above ground environment. So they, they really do well here. And they have a nice fall color. They go kind of a burgundy red. Uh, we've also got some hybrid elms going in. Those tend to also be uh, both fast growing and relatively tough and resilient. Uh, and I think we might have a couple of ash trees and an oak tree going in, although I haven't been involved in those, but uh, those are also pretty good choices. The ash tree may be the weakest choice. Um, ash trees just have a lot of issues, uh, but most of what we planted out here, and even the ash tree is fine, these are really good selections. And they're a good size. We planted 15 gallon size, big enough that you can tell it's a tree, but small enough that you're not planting a well-established uh, problematic root architecture. And again, the root architecture is, is fundamental. You might have gotten some footage. When we take the root ball out of the container, we take a saw and we cut an inch off the entire perimeter of that root. Because any of those roots that have turned, we want to cut them before they turn. So that new growth comes out away from the trunk and doesn't continue in that inefficient and potentially lethal circle. He also defines the tree canopy. Well, I'm going to give you two definitions because there's the one tree canopy and there's a, an urban canopy. The tree's canopy is the reach of the branches and the foliage that those branches hold. That is an individual tree's canopy. When we talk about it in an urban forest setting, though, we're re usually referring to the amalgamation of all the individual trees canopies into the tree canopy coverage of a neighborhood, a city, uh, something like that. So it's, it's basically a measure of how much of our uh, landscape has, has tree shade over it. Almost time for lunch. It happens after we hear from Greg to confirm he's earned a spot in the lunch line. Oh, I, uh, I'm trained to lead people who have never planted a tree in planting a tree. So they give us about five volunteers each. I think we had about seven team leaders today. And uh, our job is to make sure that the volunteers get the tree in the ground in the right way. He explains why he is attracted to trees and estimates that he has planted 40 trees. Uh, four plus a couple more that we just helped out with. We're kind, you know? Uh, let's see, one of them was a burr oak. It's that one right there. It's going to be really big in a number of years. Two ash trees and this elm tree right here. I'm an environmentalist and uh, it doesn't take you very long to figure out that trees are just absolutely critical to uh, stabilizing our climate. And that's what drives everything for me. I might be up around 50 trees by now. I've been on several of these projects and uh, I've planted some trees on my own elsewhere. He hopes to someday come back and enjoy the trees planted here today. Uh, it hasn't been long enough to be to be years later for me yet, but uh, yeah, I plan on coming back to check on some of these trees. And uh, we're going to check on the soil here. That's kind of a personal goal of mine is the soil here is mostly sand 
and uh, so this is going to be a good example for seeing how all this mulch is going to decompose and go into the soil and it's going to amend the soil and uh, in a couple of years the soil in these mulch rings will be a totally different kind of soil than what's out here on the playground. There's a 10. <laughs> uh, Missy is another leader that we have at the delivery team at Coors Chick-fil-A and she ordered a catering order so we're here to help out and to provide the community specifically this church with good service, great food and of course all the love in the world. Absolutely, I mean we wouldn't be breathing without those trees so it's just another way to to give back to the earth by planting trees and caring for nature. After lunch, the final ceremony is the dedication of a wooden bench for the school in honor of Missy and Chrissy's father. There's a bench on the way. It's a memorial bench um, to the father of the people who currently run the school. And the bench is made by a fellow named Tony Pomo. Tony Pomo has a tree business here, Southwest Tree Specialists. And he also extracts trees when they need to come down. Um, and what he does is he takes some of the better wood that comes from the extraction and he turns that wood into handmade products like tables and benches and things like that. So Tony, um, he is a multifaceted fac faceted partner of ours. He digs the holes. He provides us with the mulch free because he's going to come dig the hole anyway. So he brings a black 15 gallon bucket with, a, with a mulch for every tree. Um, and he leaves it near the hole after he digs the hole. And then at the end of the day, Tony comes in and he picks up all of the stakes, all of the black buckets, and takes all of the trash away for us because he's going to recycle all of that into his business. Um, and today he's bringing also a bench that was handmade by his group um, that's going to have a plaque in it that's the memorial for the father. Uh, the bench is going to go right over here, sort of at the, at the front of the school, where we've just planted a beautiful maple tree and put in some understory bushes as well. Here is Anthony, the maker of the bench. That is correct. All of our wood comes from the local community out of the urban forest and we salvage and, and reuse. Over three years, about two dozen. Incidentally, I'm not sure where it went, but a memorial bench went out recently and I got a photograph of it from these folks saying they wanted something like this. I said, no problem, I made that one. And so. That one's up in the open space, I believe. Oh my gosh, that's cool. And Missy, the words of gratitude. would say, okay, the kids eat some candy. Well, he would buy $500 with the candy. <laughs> he would say, I would say, Dad, there's some kids that don't have a backpack or school supplies. And he wouldn't just get a couple of things of paper. He would have a whole basket at Costco with paper and pens. And he, we have some big shoes to fill. But this bench is going to help everybody remember that uh, my dad, you know, his dad started this whole thing, his brother Franklin, his sister Franklin, but my dad carried on in his own way by having a hug for everybody that walked in the door and a kiss on the forehead. And we have to, we have to pass these memories and these traditions on to our kids. The love and the kindness of this little school that nobody knows about in the middle of the South Valley. But you saw today with all of the generations of kids that have come through this school and they know where to find love. They know where to find community. And I just want to say thank you because this means the world to me and Papa's grandsons. And I hope that their kids and your kids and his kids and your kids for generations and generations will continue to live on this legacy and continue to be a part of Western Heights Learning Center. So thank you guys, thank you for everything. This is beautiful. At the conclusion of a successful morning, everyone went home One, and left the trees three, to do their One, thing two, for years three. to come. Trees! Who knows, maybe one of these trees planted here today will become someone's favorite tree. 
I live in the deep South Valley now, up against the Isleta Pueblo. I live on a small um, extended family farm, and we have lots of trees that I love. We have a great variety of trees, and we're planting trees all the time. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know that I have a favorite tree. Um, I just love all trees. Well, there are some trees I don't care for much, but I, I would still rather have a tree, even a species that I don't like much, than having bare ground and no shade. Grew up in a lot of different places, but almost always way out in the backwoods. Uh, the mountains of Costa Rica, the mountains of northwest Arkansas. So trees are just a really fundamental part of, of my life. But in that, um, one of my favorite trees is the strangler fig, which you find in tropical parts of the world throughout the tropics. Uh, they, they're a fig, genus ficus. They start as a little kind of epiphytic vine up in the top of a canopy and send down roots, and then they basically grow around and over the host tree. The host tree dies from light starvation and rots away, and you have this giant emergent rain tree, a rainforest giant that, that is basically a, it looks like a choya st uh, stem, a, a decayed choya stem. It's, it's a hollow network of, of fused uh, tissue, and they're just really cool. You can climb inside them and climb up to the top of the tree on the inside of the trunk. Um, I used to um, climb this, I don't even know what kind of tree it was, but it was a really big tree. Uh, um, one of the churches that I attend and I would climb it every day and they used to tell me girls can't climb trees but girls can climb trees. If you would like to get involved there are dozens of things you could do to add trees to Albuquerque which only has a 7% tree cover so your help is needed. To help in your neighborhood or your state contact the Arbor Day Foundation. In New Mexico contact Tree New Mexico. People could get involved. There's lots of ways to get involved with us. Um, if you go to treenewmexico.org, www.treenm.org, um, you'll find a number of ways you can get involved. Of course, people can always donate to us. We love donors, and we're, we're trying right now to build our small sustaining donor um, base. Um, but also people can, uh, you would see, you'll see some of the people here are what we call team leaders. Those are people that plant with us. They're volunteers that plant with us regularly. They're trained to plant trees. People can come out on any day that we're planting, um, usually in our big neighborhoods program, and just sign up for that day and just come plant trees for four or five hours. Um, we make it a lot of fun. You don't have to do any of the digging. You just get to pull the tree out of the bucket get its roots all spread out, put it in the ground, put the dirt back in and water it in. Um, we also have some opportunities for people to help us with office work, so some of the um, paperwork that we have to do on a regular basis. Um, and also we, ha we share a small tree nursery with the city of Albuquerque with open space called the Woodward House Tree Nursery. At that site we grow out some of the smaller stock that we use in our giveaway programs and we're always needing volunteers who are really steady and consistent to go in there a couple of times a week and water the stock down. Um, sometimes when we're receiving seedlings, we ask another volunteer group to come in and help us repot those seedlings, um, get them into a new plot, get them pot, get them watered down. Um, so we have a wide variety of volunteer opportunities, both kind of office work and being outdoors working with trees.